Well, welcome back, friends. Today we're going to be doing some chainsaw carving. Give y'all something a little, little new to look at. So I should have already had these done before now, but we've got a fall festival coming up at my, the school my kids go to. So I always donate something every year. And uh, this year I'm going to be doing some pumpkins. So we'll get a. This is a practice run. So uh, this is obviously not a good block. It has a crack in it right here, but. It's got a screw coming up through this board into the bottom of it so it won't move. But I can, it's loose enough I can turn it by hand. I can turn it. So what I'm gonna do now is come out here to the edge and drill me a hole and screw another block on here. And being out here on the edge, that will give me room to bevel the bottom half and turn it without hitting this board or my bandsaw mill where I'm set up at to work. I can spin it and get a good shape all the way around without being restricted here now what i've done here is i pre-drilled my hole in this board so that this uh timber framing screw can fit through there easily it's it won't grip the hole it'll just screw up into the uh block and it'll spin freely in this hole Got no gas in it. All right, topped off our gas. We're gonna get back on it. I've decided on this one because I got a flat face. I may uh, do a jack o' lantern instead of a pumpkin on this one. Just make some kind of a uh, Halloween face on this flat part, and then kind of round it off from that, and kind of blend it in. Some people do traditional pumpkins like that with no face. Some people make jack-o'-lanterns, which is a pumpkin with a face on it. So we'll see. This might be a jack-o'-lantern here, but here we go. thing I've got that some of the pro carvers have this little finger sander I guess you call it it's a small size belt sander pretty much and you see how narrow it is and you can take this thing and really get in here and do some fine detailing that's what I like about this I got that at Harbor Freight and that's been a pretty good one you adjust your tracking right there it comes with several several of these belts coarse and fine that's a real handy tool for a wood carver when it comes to doing your detail work. 
I purchased this little uh, wheel here. As you can see, it's very rough and coarse. And it is made for shaping stuff like this. It will really cut out a lot of material pretty easy. So you need don't you don't press down too hard on this. Now some people are strictly traditional, nothing but a chainsaw, burn it, and that's it. I respect you guys, and I want you getting mad at me if you're one of the traditional guys that don't use nothing but a chainsaw. I admire you. Right now I'm just trying to get in the game. And then of course I've got a regular flat flappy sanding disc let me grab it and y'all know what those are I think that is made that's a Tolson these are pretty cheap that's a dollar fifty I paid for that little disc right there and it is an 80 grit there is a uh, wholesale place up in Albemarle North Carolina I go up there I think it's Kurtz he has that Tolson brand and you can get a lot of those cutoff wheels very cheap. 50 cents a piece for the little thin flappy cutoff disc. And like I said, that one there, you can see the sticker, $1.50. I paid for that one right there. So that's a lot cheaper than some places. I've... But you see having it on the very end of that board, I'm able to contour it without hitting my bandsaw mill or hitting into the board. And, you know, that's a good idea. You don't have to have a set of those jaws. The little sawhorse with jaws you don't need that i've got this board set up on the bandsaw it's clamped over there with a clamp and it sticks out like a diving board and i got my work right there you see it's not moving around it's a pretty thick board it's about two inches thick and here i'm just using my little abrasive wheel to smooth out and round over the top and the sides here just getting it finalized ready for paint real handy wheel for doing that kind of work got that at harbor freight as well just come here with a sharpie and try to sketch out a face That's not looking too bad. Let me spin it for you. You can see the uh, the body. How I've shaped it. Not really hard to do these pumpkins. I don't even think you can mess them up, to be honest with you. Let me spin this back around. But, uh... I think I'm going to come up here and contour that uh, stem down a little bit, maybe give it a twist. Try to make it look a little more realistic. But uh, that's the thing with these pumpkins. I think the more detail you put in them, the more you're going to have to charge. So uh, if I do just a straight pumpkin without a face, that'll probably be a little more affordable. And I really don't know what to charge for these things, to be honest with you. If any of you know or made any or sold any, Leave me a comment in the comment section and let me know what uh, what you get for them in your area. I realize probably size has a lot to do with it as well, along with the detail. Character. pumpkin and realize it looks better than cleaning it. And that is a huge pumpkin. Look at this compared to my body standing here. That is huge. That would probably be one of my more expensive pumpkins if I were to carve them. And I do plan to carve more here before Halloween. I got to get started because it's uh, today I think was either the first day of October or last day of September at the point of filming today so i ain't got long i should have done had a bunch of pumpkins done if i was going to do any of this year all right so the way i've seen others do it they just kind of paint all these 
lines. You're going to come back later and go back over it with orange. So for right now, just kind of get your base down. I'll paint my eyeballs black. Go ahead and get my mouth painted black. I'll come back later and uh, hash out all the details. This just gets your, your definition lines painted. You don't worry about the overspray at this point. You're going to come back and do more. This is kind of funny. This is the first pumpkin I've painted, and here I am giving you directions on what to do. It's based off videos I've watched. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all you can do if you want to learn. Watch other people and try it yourself. And that didn't take a lot of paint right there to kind of get that starter detail in there. Well, as luck would have it, the dadgum phone cut off on me. I apologize for that. I feel like scrapping the whole video now because you missed out on some of the particulars on painting. But if you got this far, you can figure the painting part out, I'm pretty sure. But you know, what I've done, friends, is just followed other people on, on their channels. I did have to come back with a brush and some acrylic paint and cut in the eyes and nose and mouth. And I came back with a little bit lighter shade of orange and done the teeth so that they would kind of have an accent of their own. They wouldn't just sort of blend in with the orange of the pumpkin. I'll zoom in and you can see there's a little bit of contrast, a little difference in the teeth color. I got to go back with some black and trim in around those teeth. But you can see, I even like the way the burn marks are around the eyes. It's not solid. It kind of gives it a little little character there we'll back out now I did paint the stem a little green and then I burned it kind of give it an old dirty look but uh, I don't think it's too terrible it's hard to mess these up I mean you want it to look old to begin with so I'll give it a little turn for you it's not too wet I can touch it you can see how the shade of the black in those grooves and I just sprayed over that with orange lightly just so that didn't stick out too much, but just gives you some some character, some shade, some depth, I guess you would say. And this is my first one, so it's not going to be a Picasso from the start. But, uh, as you can see there, that don't look bad. It kind of looks rustic, which is kind of what I was going for. I'll take you off the tripod and we can get a closer look. You can see the little hints of green in there. I could pay a little more attention to detail in here with that stem, but that'll come in the future as I make more. I can get better at it. I don't think this looks too bad. This one here is going to the fall festival. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to trim those teeth out with some black, and I'm going to call that good. But uh, like I said, friends, I'm no pro at this. This is my first go. So just bringing you along. Again, sorry that I cut out most of the painting part. All right, I'm going to say that looks pretty good. You can see the detail in the eyes. The teeth being a little different shade of orange. I didn't want them to look exactly the same shade. And I get that darkening effect from where I burnt the wood, like the eyes, they just don't start black and then they kind of morph into black to the orange. I kind of like that deal. It's just not one solid contrast from black to orange, it kind of fades into it. I kind of like that. Looks a little more spooky-fied. But yeah, that's not bad, friends. Uh, that's pretty much all I can say about this video. Not too hard. If I could do it, you can do it. Like I said, there's more. I could be more realistic in here where these two meet, the pumpkin and the stem. And I may come back and do some kind of trim work there to make it look better. But I think for what it's for, being my first one, that is pretty good. Well, friends, I'm going to end the video with that. If you like this project, give me a thumbs up click share subscribe 
and uh, I will see you on the next carving.